Ah, yeah, I'm a Linux hater. I used Linux for over three years and have tried around five distros, but I hate it. It's a server OS and not a desktop OS. So, I tried making it a desktop OS. Just like Android has different flavors depending on the retail, that Linux has different distros. How do you make a Linux distro? You modify the environment that gets installed on the user's PC. I use the Cubic project for this. Most of the distros you see online are just pre-installing a bunch of apps and themes and renaming the original distro to their own. To maximize speed and make it feel lightweight, I went with Ubuntu 2404 as base. I also had to decide on the display server, and there's basically two options. We got X11, which is considered outdated, and Wayland, which is almost as old as X11, when it was considered outdated, but don't say that near Linux people because they will get mad. I went with Wayland because I hate it. People have complained that Windows 11 start menu is made in React and powered by a web view, so I didn't include the start menu at all. Instead, you can open apps by using this app finder. It's pretty bad, but uh, we don't care. Throughout history, operating systems have tried to get the Windows closing animation right. Windows scales and fades the window out. Mac OS makes it get sucked in or whatever, I never used that freaky OS. In my Linux distro, when you open or close a window, it burns in a bright rainbow effect. It's probably important to mention that I'm using Wayfire as the compositor, which has some built-in over-the-top animations like window resize wobbling, alt tab animations, and a bunch of other shortcuts. Since I doom scroll Instagram reels every time I have to wait for something, I keep on getting this guy with an amazing dressing style. That shirt inspired me to modify the window decorations to have a plasma-looking blue effect. I also tried modifying the buttons, but my custom ones didn't load, so I just gave up. You don't need the window buttons anyway, just use keyboard shortcuts. Most Linux distros come with a suite of apps pre-installed to either please programmers by installing new Windows configs, please graphic designers by installing the pile of shit that GIMP is, or please the average gamer by pre-installing Steam and then convert them into a Linux bracket that keeps on saying Valve, Trust and Linux when Valve just wanted to save a few millis cause ain't nobody caring about the 5% which we represent. I pre-installed every project I've ever made on the distro, and then I made Microsoft Edge the default browser, because it's my favorite and it's the best. But just in case you don't like Edge, I also installed Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Brave, Vivaldi, and Zen. I was actually gonna install a few more browsers, but they're all apparently not supported on Linux, and the only thread I found on Reddit has the top comment as I use Arch by the way, so go fuck yourself. I was struggling to find a name idea for the distro until I realized that I can just call it fuck and people will refer to it online as fuck Linux, just like they say Arch Linux. So now it's called fuck. I tried setting a wallpaper my friend had drawn me, only to realize my installation doesn't have support for wallpapers. I tried the package to ABG and it worked, but I couldn't pin apps to the desktop because that's apparently handled by a separate app. I set up something called PC Man FM QT LX QT. These people are not good at naming. It's a file manager and most importantly, an icon manager. I mean, it works pretty well, I don't know what else to say about something that just pins apps to the desktop. I didn't know what to do with the man UL package, so I just deleted it. I thought my virtual machine was broken because I couldn't hear anything, but I checked my settings and audio was enabled. Oh my god, bruh. <laughs> anyway, I asked my community what the most annoying, jobless fuck apps are on Linux, and they came up with Vi, Vim, NeoVim, Emacs, Snap, NeoFetch, and FastFetch. So now every time you try opening any of those, you get flashbang by a job application. I installed every OpenJDK version 8, 11, 17, 21, 22, 23, along with all development kits, runtime, source code, documentations, demos, debugging symbols, and alternative JVM implementations. Why? You have to install every Java version on your Linux distro. So annoying ass Linux brokies can't install it on their 512 megabyte laptop and therefore won't complain about it, so every review will be positive. Anyway, I really love when I shut down my PC, it starts updating, I go to bed, and I wake up to it being turned on. In FACOS, shutting down your computer has a 50% chance of restarting instead. Interestingly enough, I had to modify SPIN instead of VIN for overriding shutdown and power of executables. This inconsistency tickled my upper spine nerve, which led me to changing the file system to be like Windows. One thing that I always loved on Windows is the file system. You have the drive letter like C or D, the user folder which contains your user, and then existing folders for documents and downloads. So I created C slash user slash username, which provides a link between your actual Windows folder and the statistically most practical file system. The folders are desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, and most importantly, homework and games. There's a file in documents called readme please. Kinda weird, seems like an ARG, but that's for you to find out.
Another thing I dislike about Linux is the cursor. I'm just not a big fan of it. I like the Windows cursors. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to search for Windows cursors ported to Linux. So I opened up my drawing program, started drawing the default arrow, pointer, grab and text high beam, cloned the I'd wait a theme, replaced cursors with my custom ones, compiled, and boom, look at this beauty. Something is missing. There we go. Window blur. Speaking of windows, it got dark outside, so that was it for that day. I closed my PC and went outside. What can I get you? Just a beer. You look exhausted. Yeah, I've been fucking with Linux all day. Shell scripts, bunch of scripts, right? And... I have no idea what any of that means. I basically I'm making an operating system that's annoying as fucking purpose. Why? Because I can. How'd you even learn to do that? From Brilliant. Today's sponsor. What's that? It's this learning platform. Their interactive lessons make even complex ideas easy to understand, with a bunch of courses in math, science, programming, data analytics, and AI. What makes it different is that you can actually do things, solving problems, playing with concepts, which is way more effective than just watching videos. A majority of the scripts used in my distro were written in Python, which you can actually learn on Brilliant. You get hands-on experience with real programs and learn to think like a programmer. Plus, you can learn anywhere, on your phone or computer, whatever works for you. So it's like... School, but less boring. I used to be a Yeah, yeah, shut up. It's designed to keep you motivated with just a little bit of learning every day. Helps you build real skills and actually become a better problem solver. To try Brilliant for free, go to brilliant.org slash facedev or scan the QR code on screen. Plus you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Alright, now get the fuck out. Oh, hey. I've got my coat, I got, I've got my coat, I got drink. I, I, I. My friend reminded me of that green skull keyboard meme that was launching around a few months ago. So I split up the sounds, wrote a Python script that intercepts your key presses, made it play the sound for keys, space, backspace, and enter, hooked it to automatically start on boot, and... So I can run Neovim. Alright, I'm gonna run Neovim. Then I can do like a super fast thing stuff. Um, I don't know, close it. Obviously, you can turn it off if you want, but I don't remember how. Maybe like kill the process that's running the script. It doesn't matter anyway because Linux people never use GUIs. They will figure it out. According to Linux users, bloat is one of the worst characteristics an installation can have in the world than Soviet gulags. Which is the reason why when you install a package in FockOS, this Dark Souls text animation plays, blocking your screen for about 2 seconds to make you really think, is this bloat? How does it work? APT, the package manager, has this thing called hooks, which are basically scripts that run at certain points during package installation. I created the hook that triggers after packages are installed, so when you run apt install something, apt does all its normal stuff, downloads the package, installs it, and then right at the end, it runs our hooks, a script that checks apt's history log to figure out which package you actually typed, and it also works with multiple packages. Now let's tackle a frequent question I get. I identify as a Linux hater. Anti-Linux if you may. We even held a detoxification in my Discord server, removing rights from Linux users and requesting screenshot proof to determine their operating system. Many of you have asked me why I hate Linux. Like, many many of you. My answer is, it's privacy slop. If Linux was truly good, it would have more than 4.8% market share. Same thing with Firefox. They often claim that Firefox is a good browser because they browse r slash Linux. If I started browsing r slash Linux, do you think I would become that dumb too? The Linux UI is stuck in 2020. The text rendering is so blurry that it gave me vision issues. The only time I would recommend Linux is if you have a really crappy PC and are really broke to get a better one, or learning Linux command for servers. But even then, just get a server so you can learn it, or WSL or a Mac. For you to be born today from 12 previous generations, you needed a total of 4094 ancestors over the last 400 years. Think of it for a moment. How many struggles? How many battles? How many difficulties? How much sadness? How much happiness? How many love stories? How many expressions of hope for the future? How much did your ancestors have to undergo for you to exist in this present moment? And you want to be a Linux user? Fuck Linux is available for download on fucklinux.org. It's like 16 gigabytes because we need to gatekeep this niche OS. And since it's that big, I had to split it up using 7-zip, so if you download it, you have to download every single file, and then click on the first file, which will open up the extracted uh, archive. So, just so you know. I know all Linux users secretly create to install Windows 11, but I can't quite prove it. Don't take everything I said seriously, it's all love. Shout out to people in the Discord server and YouTube community tab for suggesting ideas. Thanks for watching, and as always, 
See you in the next one. Систем ДССР – неопознанный летающий объект Редхат Microsoft, инопланетяне зона 51 GCC Бэкдор в Linux. Антиматерия ЦРУ спецслужбы Редхат Linux GCC слежка за людьми и open source Бэкдор в межпланетарных масштабах США разведка в System D новый проект Редхат по захвату земли System D. GCC суперсекретная разработка Редхат System D еврейская цивилизация Commodore 64.